afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Dual Universe Stellar Transmission for the months of February and March. Wow, has it really been that long? Anyway, we're going to attempt to take in all of the month's notable player events and happenings and condense them down for you to enjoy. But before we go on, we want to thank all of you for helping grow our content, and if you're not already, maybe consider subscribing as it helps us to continue to give you this content. To start off with, we have some breaking news, a shock that rippled through the DU community, leaving all of us with some anxiety about the future of DU. The cause of this unsettlement? After a huge period of silence, the DU community awoke to the shocking news that Jean-Christophe Baillet of Novaquark has been removed from the role of CEO, with nothing but rumors and speculation surrounding the truth around his removal. The current speculation is that he was voted out from CEO because he had previously sold a lot of his shares, bringing his total voting power to 34.7%. He had previously said he wouldn't sell below 51% of the company, but due to budget shortages, he had done so and had gone back on his promise. Which in turn had meant he had surrendered his majority power to the board. Once he was voted out, a man named Nicholas Granatinos picked up the mantle of CEO, leaving many to wonder what the future holds in store for us. All we know about Nicholas Granatinos is that he also runs a few other companies, with one of them being called BrickChain, which, from our research, has exposed the fact that he has never worked in a video game company before, and that he kind of looks like Hugh Jackman. Granatinos also has a history of buying and selling companies he acquires, and has owned a total of seven previous companies. He currently has three active companies, one of them now being Novacorp. It's no secret that NQ has seriously desirable technology that massive companies such as Microsoft want to swoop in like vultures on. We dug further and also discovered he has had a messy divorce which led us to asking the question of his true motives in becoming CEO of NQ. Is this the beginning of the end? Or will the fresh blood save DU, which as of late has seen a steady decline in its player base since update point two three and some of the more recent issues with the game? This has led many communities to slow their investment and progress as interest in the game has slowly waned over time. Only time will reveal the ultimate fate of Dual Universe. Now, with all the doom and gloom out of the way, let's get back to some of our regular stories. In an effort to help revitalize the community, Guild Coalition Ascendancy set up a blockade around Faley on the 19th of March. This blockade was announced on the DU forums and Discord informing everyone of this week-long occupation. The goal of this move was to encourage PvP, a little RP, and to invite the DU community to engage in combat and help create more interest in content for the game. According to sources, the big reason that Faley was chosen for the blockade was due to Russian pirate activity, which had not only been attacking unaware players, but AC transports as well. Empire, with some assistance from Penrose, tried to defeat the blockade, but ultimately lost after a long and hard-fought battle. As you can see from their screenshots displaying now, it was absolute carnage. This is mainly because Ascendancy outnumbered them 6 to 1. Empire suffered some of the heaviest losses, suffering almost 200 million quanta worth of damage to their assets. In addition to this, their capital ship was also completely destroyed. Overall, the blockade was a complete success for the Ascendancy. After this, the blockade officially ended, and the AC left Faley on Sunday. In other news, Anarchy, a member of the Russian Pirate Alliance known as CVA, which is well known around the DU community for abusing the exploits and broken mechanics within Dual Universe, has struck again. This time taking on a high-profile DU community member named Elias using one of their common methods of stealing a player construct by forcing it out of the safe zone, which is supposed to be bannable, yet NQ still has yet to enforce it. According to sources, the ship in question was a high-value target and contained a very important script developed by Elias. Elias' script was described as an augmented reality GUI, which was made in Lua. The script was the only one of its kind in the game at the moment, and his only copy was on the cockpit of the stolen ship. Here's hoping that maybe NQ will take note from the community as the backlash intensifies. This is a very different reaction compared to the last time an exploit of this magnitude had occurred, that being an incident where Marketplace 15 had its RDMS set up incorrectly and was subsequently stripped of resources, resulting in the ban of dozens of players, most notably Scoopy and Uberjuice. You will see their side of the story on screen now. Scoopy and Uberjuice were senior officers of BSI, who is one of the largest Star Citizen organizations currently at about 2,600 members, eighth in the world, and were in the process of making DU their secondary venture, expecting a large number to join DU. 
the banning of two of their senior officers over a misunderstanding, and unwillingness to discuss the topic turned the BSI community away from investing in DU over its poor community management. This also clearly shows an inconsistency when it comes to banning of players, seemingly only occurring when the devs themselves are affected in some form. Hopefully, with the new leadership in NQ, we will start seeing a more fair judgment around the community. However, this remains doubtful. It is no secret that the player base has had issues with NQ dev teams for quite some time now. This would be an easy fix if they took a page out of the book from the Starbase dev team, which often engages with their community and are generally held in high regard around the Starbase community. Well, that's all we have for this month. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe for more Dual Universe related political updates as well as updates for other various space games, and we will see you next time.